God is so perfect in all that he does and all that he says. And just going to kind of recap, God has been doing a perfect work, a perfect work here. And I thank God because we've been talking about perfection and living a perfect life before God. A lot of people say nobody's perfect. And I, I put the question out there and Yet, no one has been able to tell me, you, you know, where did that come from? Definitely didn't come from the Word of God, because nowhere in the Word of God does it say that we can't be perfect. As a matter of fact, we're commanded, be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And we really, really, really looked at Perfection being measured by the word of God. However, the word of God measures perfection. That is even God is measured by his own word. And that's why we know and how we know that God is perfect, that he himself is holy. And then we talked about the fact that the reason why we consider ourselves not perfect is because there are things that we do that are wrong. And those things come about because of urges that we have. And we learn that if we give an urge time, if we just sit and just let the urge play out, it's going to leave. Therefore, it renders us perfect. Imperfection is a choice. If you are imperfect, you chose to do that. You were tempted to do something and you decided to yield to temptation. And I promise you, nobody in here is tempted 24-7. It comes and goes. If you're tempted 24-7, then it's not a temptation. Because temptation likes to leave you alone and then come back when you're most vulnerable. So therefore, when those times come, all you have to do is be ready for it. It's just that, just that simple. Just be ready for it. So now today we're going to... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, well, I won't say beat a dead horse, but you got it. For those who have been here, you got it. And if you weren't here, it's absolutely free on our uh, YouTube channel, the Feast of the Lord YouTube channel. Look at the past two Sundays, and it will bless you tremendously. And you'll begin to literally live that perfect life before God. Because I was thinking about it, Pastor Jeff Cote. If Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, how in the world are we going to be able to do that? Amen. If we're supposed to be perfect, how? Because I, I knew I, I was doing my best. But when God opened up his word to me and I opened it back up to y'all, that right there was it. I said, we can, we can do this. We can literally be perfect. It's just a choice. That's, it just boils down to a choice. Every time I'm tempted, every time, even if I'm not tempted, if I just want to do this because I just want to do this. Ain't no devil around. I just want to do this. It's my choice to rather do right or to do wrong. Simply my choice. And if I choose right all the time, how can I not be perfect? Okay. That's good. Now we're going to move on to achieving perfect love. <laughs> All right. yeah. Thank you, yes. We've already talked about perfection in terms of sin. All right. You already know. All right. Good. We don't have to sin. For all have sinned, but all don't have to sin. You did it, but you don't have to do it. Like the Holy Spirit said to me, Oof, yes, I, I guess I was a teenager, so he said, let your last time be your last time. The last time you did it, let that be the last time you'll do it. Just that simple. Okay, now, well, I'll just get on to it because I'm excited. I just am. First John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. 
Everybody, let's say that together. For some reason, I just heard the entire audience say that in my ears. Let's say that part together. There is no fear in love. Y'all sound just like I heard it. But perfect love casteth out fear. Anytime you see ETH, casteth, ETH, on the end of a word, it means to continue. Perfect love continues to cast out fear. Why? Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Y'all about to be so helped because I was so helped when I studied this. So the presence of a godly supernatural agent automatically ejects an ungodly supernatural agent. Love is from God. And love ejects, casts out, forces out. Pushes out fear. If you have fear, you're not in perfect love. So we're going to have to deal with that. I heard uh, or read, rather, a tweet from Gregory Dickow, a famous preacher. And it's, it, he said something like, the reason why love casts out fear is because you can depend on love that you can depend on. And if you wholeheartedly, now I'm, I'm explaining what he means. If you wholeheartedly depend on the love of God, you will never fear. If you wholeheartedly know that God loves you, what do you have to fear? Because you're fearing, fear, well, Let's deal with this. Fear is a belief that something bad will happen. That's what fear is. We believe that something bad is going to happen. So if you know, really, really know, and you're thoroughly convinced that God loves you, you'll never fear. Because nothing bad is going to happen. Do you know I expected it to be quiet right there? And not, oh, that's it. I love God. Nothing bad is going to happen because we're in that mindset of, well, I mean, I know he loves us, but bad things still happen. Prove it. Now y'all quiet. <laughs> Prove that bad things still happen. Do you know why we say bad things still happen? Because what happens, we consider it bad, but God does it. Things happen, we consider it bad because it's not what we wanted to happen. But if it's what's, what God wanted to happen, it's good. It's absolutely good. How can somebody getting in a car accident and having to go to the emergency room, how in the world can that be something good? How? Well, it's most definitely good if something happened a couple years ago. I mean, they were fine. They went to the emergency room just to get checked out, and they were fine. But where they were going, uh, the building blew up, and they would have been there. They would have been there. So what we call bad isn't bad. What we're going to have to do is say, okay, Father, this happened. So... Was this, is this your will? Is this your plan? Is this part of your plan? Because I gave you my life. I don't have it anymore. And that's the way I live. And I encourage you to live the same way. I gave you my life. I don't have it anymore. Now, this thing just happened. Is this you? Or is this just the devil trying to do something? Is this my fight? Or is it yours? Let me know what's going on. If we prayed more than we thought... We would be a mighty, mighty people. A lot of times when people come to me about things that they're going through and stuff, I say, well, have you prayed about it? 
And they sit right there, and, and they shake their head, but they face in, you know, did I really pray? I said, okay, show me how did you pray about this situation. You mean here now? Yeah, here. Now in the office, just show me. How did you pray? But really, i be honest, I've really just been thinking about it a lot. But what do you expect God to do? A lot of people pray that God gets rid of the situation, gets rid of the trouble. Sometimes God gives trouble your blessing. Amen. Amen. What if Job said, God, listen, I don't want to go through no more of this, no more of this at all. He would have never got double everything. God bless him with double. If you're going through something right now, ask the Father. Father, did, what, what, what's going on here? You know, I will just keep praising you and glorifying you because I don't want to consider this bad if this is actually good. So let me know what's really happening. The way we're supposed to talk to God when things happen. Okay, Father, let me in on what's going on. I didn't see this coming. So what's going on? What if he doesn't say anything? Then he's not true to his word. And how many of you know he is true to his word? Because he said, in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he'll direct your path. Unless God is a liar, if I acknowledge him, he's going to direct my path. It's just that simple. So I just need to acknowledge you, Father, this is going on. I know you already know about it. I'm not informing. I'm only acknowledging. Amen. Yes. So now what do I do? Because I don't want to fear that something bad is going to come out of this. The next part that I, I want to talk about is love. What love actually means in the original language here in uh, this scripture, in the Greek. It means goodwill. The faculty of conscious and especially of deliberate righteous action. Conscious action, deliberate righteous action. No, love is not a feeling. It's not about, um, 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 give me a hug. It is a conscious action, a deliberate righteous action. I meant to do this. For God so loved the world that he gave. It was a deliberate action. We think about love, we think about feelings. We think about butterflies in our stomach, how we feel when we just met somebody. No, 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 no. Because when the butterflies fly away, Amen. you still got the love. When that feeling dies down, you still have to love. So you might as well go ahead and get it settled what love is. Because the butterflies are going to die. Poor little things. <laughs> but it is what it is. So love is goodwill. It is what we do consciously deliberately and then perfect here mean it's brought to its end it's finished lacking nothing necessary to completeness lacks nothing of being complete it is perfect Amen. of course you know my wife is a painter and 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 and, and, and Glover is also a painter so whenever you're painting I've seen uh, them go back and say, okay, mm, something has, and then they, they put what they call what? Finishing what? Finishing touches on it. Then they're back, okay. Now there's nothing else needed. It is complete. Yeah. Um, perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Look, just perfect. Because it's complete. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. We become perfect when we can say we're complete. The reason why we, another reason why we don't want to consider ourselves perfect, sweetheart, is because we think we need something else. But then that afternoon, we'll say, Jesus is all I need. And then two hours later, Lord, I need so and so, so. What, what, what happened? We don't think we're complete. Therefore, we don't think we're perfect. 
because I still want this. I still need this. I, you know, I don't have this yet. I don't have. You don't consider yourself complete. And do you know what that means? Which the Holy Spirit just said to me. That means you feel God hasn't given you all that you need. Like God is lacking in, in his care for us. God, I really need this. You know, why won't you give it to me? We go to God begging and stuff. God, like, you don't think you have everything you need. Oh, but I'm perfect. You gave me your life. I'm the one that's perfect. You don't trust me. Whew. We're talking about achieving perfect love. All right. So in looking at this scripture, let's read it in terms of, I kind of broke down those three words so that we could say this scripture based on their definitions in terms of fear, belief that something bad will happen, love, always doing right towards people. That's love. And, of course, perfect is complete. So we could literally use these to say the scripture, there is no belief that something bad will happen when we're always doing right towards people. But being perfect in always doing right towards people casts out all belief that something bad will happen happen because believing that something bad will happen has torment and he that believes that something bad will happen is not made complete in always doing right towards people you thought it was all about the wishy gushy mushy mushy How else can you love except by doing right towards people? Oh, we've had all kind of definitions of love just floating around in our brains. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's all about doing right. Love is all about doing right towards people. When you say, I love you, what does that mean? Does it mean I want to give you a hug for five minutes? What does that mean? Y'all quiet. What does it mean when you tell somebody I love you? Think about it. When you tell somebody, your sister, your brother in Christ, when you say I love you, or they say I love you, and they say, you say back, I love you also, what did you mean by that? Well, somebody stop you and say, Sam, what you just said, you love me. What you, what you mean by you love me? What, what, what do you mean? I ain't going to do you no harm. Nothing but right towards you. So next time you tell somebody you love them, you're literally saying, I'm not going to do anything but right towards you. That's what love means. There's nothing else. And even now, I can see y'all thinking, like, what do I mean when I be saying I love you? I mean, they, they, you know, I just tell people that because, you know, it's nice to say, but what do I really mean? We say stuff that we don't even know. We don't know what we mean. I love you. I love you. What did you mean? <laughs> what I mean? I mean, I love you. What did you mean by you love me? I mean, you got special feelings? To, no, I ain't, like, I ain't like that towards you. So what do you mean? You see what I'm saying? Now we're thinking right. We know what love actually is. And when you have that, you don't have to worry about messing up sexually. Because it, it just means doing right towards you. Ain't no feelings, ain't no stirring up or no nothing. All right, y'all got this? Okay, good. I'm not afraid because I didn't do anything wrong. That's the whole statement. Right there. I'm not afraid because I didn't do anything wrong. (sighs) I did everything right. So, shouldn't be afraid. 
But Apostle Wall, what if I didn't do something right? Well, then let's deal with let's deal with this. This is why achieving perfection in righteousness, which means having no sin, is not only mandatory to get to heaven, but it's the only way to defeat our enemy's greatest weapon, fear. We have to be perfect to get to heaven. And perfect love literally casts out all fear. It is the devil's greatest weapon. There's no weapon that the enemy is not even temptation. Fear is the greatest weapon that the enemy uses against us. Therefore, we fear if we don't love, if we don't have that particular love, that mindset that God loves me so much, I don't have anything to fear. I don't have this in my life, and the devil stole this from me. And God knew it. Before God said, let there be light, he knew what was about to happen. It'd just be nice to have this. God has your life the way it is. Holy Spirit just said that. The way it is now, God has your life. What you're experiencing now, God has it. With every drop of love in his heart for us. He has our lives right where they are. So what are we to say? That God really doesn't love us? If we fear, we have not been made perfect in love. Just that simple. Someone inexperienced, inexperienced with perfect love may mistake your no fear attitude for arrogance. No, no, I'm not afraid. Oh, you think you so much. No, 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 no. It's not about me. No. You know so-and-so, such and so happened? Oh, who cares? Oh, you think you are that. No, 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 no. I have no fear. No fear. Because I know who God is to me. I know who I am to God. God is crazy about me. If you don't think that way about yourself, something is wrong with your relationship with God. God is crazy about me. He sacrificed his only begotten son for me. I was literally on God's mind when Jesus was being persecuted, when he was being crucified. I was literally on God's mind, me personally. He did did it for me. He's crazy about me. He is sold out on some Shane Wall. God loves himself some Shane Wall. If you don't think that way about yourself, go back to God. Spend that time with him. You know, if you don't spend time with people, you don't know what they're thinking about you. You'll go, you'll go to imagine they, they act in some kind of way today. I, you know, I'm going to just leave that alone. Because, you know, to be honest, they've been acting this way for some time. Did you go to them? People come to me with that foolish. They used to. They don't come no more. Did you go to them? Ask them. No. What do I do? Bring them together. Oh, goodness gracious. No, I'm not that way. Why, why would you even think that? Why would you even think that? I've never... So you were imagining that she was doing No, I, I didn't notice I passed by you and didn't speak. See, that's where it is. Amen. You're just imagining. That's all. You just simply, you imagine this. That's why I had to bring them in. You imagine. So now you need to repent to her. That's what happens. All right. What if we do right and still we're unrightfully punished? You do right, but you're still unrightfully punished. Well, uh, I, I mentioned it earlier, but deal with it now. We have to ask ourselves, were we literally all right in that situation? 
somebody just told me about somebody who went to jail and all they did was drive the car. They didn't even know that the person was going in the bank to steal. Said, just drop me off at the bank. I need to get some money. Went in there and robbed the bank. He had no clue, but he was the driver. But he did know that this quote unquote friend was shady. He knew he was shady. So where you really are right in the situation, even if you didn't do anything wrong, where you supposed to be there? Amen. Bible says don't be a friend to the world or a friend with the world. Because if you're a friend to the world, you are an enemy of God. So where are you supposed to be there anyway? You know, I don't know why, why it's like that. People would rather hang out and just chill out with the world. Unless you're trying to get them saved. And even then, Jesus didn't hang out with them. He went there, tried to get them saved, left, and went on with, his, with the saved folk, the disciples. Even though some of them wasn't the best. But still, <laughs> these are the ones that God gave me, and I'm sticking with them. Y'all ain't most wonderful either. But still hang with you. At least you're proclaiming Jesus. So this is what we have to do. If we were right or if you're not right but you repented unto righteousness, the point is that there is no fear in love. Therefore, unjust punishment, if you were punished and God says you shouldn't have been punished, then God is going to rectify that. God will judge and take care of that. That you don't have to worry about. Just stick with the perfection. The reason why a lot of people mess up, they try to be God. Amen. You can't be God. Please know that. We cannot be God. God's job description is to take care of unjust punishment. That's not our job description. Uh-uh, they did me wrong, I'm going to get them. No, that's revenge. The Bible says revenge belongs to God. That's his job description. We're never to ever, to ever, to ever, to ever to get revenge. Never. Not even slight revenge. But it's okay. I know what to do. I know what to do. I know next time, next time they need, no problem. I know exactly. That's revenge. If we get revenge, you, you, have, you have a couple things going on there. If you get revenge... God is going to judge you. You're going to have to repent, get back right, and then God's going to have to deal with that whole situation in a different manner because you already got your revenge for that. Holy Spirit just said to me, and because you got the revenge, the blessing that you would have gotten if you would let God have his revenge, you no longer get. Because that situation is now over. You solved the problem your way. So now you have to ask God to forgive you. You have literally uh, annihilated your blessing for that situation. Well, God will forgive you. Yes, he will definitely forgive you. But now he can't do anything else about that situation because you settled it. You settled it without him. So now it's settled. So many of us have gotten revenge and the blessing that God wanted to give us for going through that situation the right way is gone. We will probably never know the miracles that we have forfeited because we did things our way instead of God's way. How many of you right now will say that you know, you just know God has some things for you that that you have not yet received and some things that were owed you and do you and you just know it, but you didn't get them. Let me see your hands. Exactly. That was it. Feel like you missed something. Like I know I was supposed to get that, but you ain't go through it right. You said, I didn't put my hand up to, to uh, say to y'all, that's what you do. I put my hand up because I'm one of the ones. Oh, I know I am. Amen. I know I am. Done repented and everything, but I don't get that blessing. 
See, when I preach this word, it looks like I'm preaching it to y'all. No, I'm preaching it to us. But it won't happen again. Amen. Hello. If I got to go through, I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through. Holy, the Holy Spirit said this just now. He said, sometimes we know people have done us wrong, and it seems like they prosper. It seems like they prosper, and we still here looking crazy. Why is that? Same situation. We didn't go through it right. Holy Spirit is speaking now. Amen. Just the Amen. fact that you say, look at them prospering and look at me right here, means you wanted something bad to happen to them because of what they did to you. Amen. Why would you even highlight the fact that they like they prospering? Here I am. Why are you looking at it like that? Why? You wanted something bad to happen to them because they did something, quote unquote, bad to you. Is that the kind of heart we're supposed to have? Or are we supposed to love? Like we want to be loved. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Amen. Yes. Really? Kill them, Lord. <laughs> Take everything they got. Burn it to the ground with no insurance. <laughs> because of what they did to your servant. Let all their kids die. Uh-huh, yeah, you would never pray that like that, but you still want just something bad to happen because of what it's just something bad. Why? What if God said, oh, you want something bad to happen? Watch what happens. And then it happens, and they come crying to you. I can't believe it. You're feeling horrible because you wanted something bad to happen to them. But like, God, I didn't know you was going to do all of this. You better watch the way. And you see, do you know if you throw that out, it's going to come back? Watch what you wish for others. Watch what you want for others. Because when you sow that seed, you're going to eat the fruit or the vegetables or the nuts. Amen. What do you want for somebody who did something bad to you? Let me tell you the way to pray. Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. However you want to deal with it, Lord. That's my, that's, that's my prayer and my heart to you. But my action is to love them. Didn't the Bible say love your enemies? Yes. Pray for your enemies. Yes. Not pray against. Pray for. That's our response. But do you know what they did? Yes. It's not easy to pray for somebody who did something like that. Did God say, it shall be easy unto you, therefore, as thou pray for thine enemy? <laughs> That's not a scripture anywhere. Yea, I say unto thee, take the ease of praying for your enemy. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not easy praying for your enemy. It's not easy loving your enemy. <laughs> the Holy Spirit just said, and it's not easy for the enemy to love you either. Because all of us ain't been the, the most wonderful thing. Amen. Sometimes they became our enemies simply because of something we did to them. Be honest about the whole thing. Woo. All right, all the scriptures come up. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. Verse 1 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels... And have not charity. What is charity? Love. love. Charity is love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, which is these things over here. If I speak with tongues, that's, that's, that's how I sound. That's it. Those are brass, sound of brass, tinkling cymbal. I don't see y'all shouting and jumping or nothing. I hit the cymbals. That's exactly, that's exactly what that's saying. You just sound good. 
You just sound. Wong. If you don't have love, speak with tongues of, of men and of angels. If you don't have love, you just sound like you just that. A lot of people sound ting, 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 ting. It just sounds whatever. Oh, what you said just went throughout the room. That's all it is. Nobody here jumped or shouted. Nobody said, hmm, I felt something when he hit that symbol like that. <laughs> Nothing whatsoever. And though, verse 2, 1 Corinthians 13, and though I have the gift of prophecy, everybody want to prophesy. I want to say it's going to happen, and then you actually see it happens. And understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, that ain't nothing. I am nothing. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do that. Out of what? Out of a desire for people to see that you know the future? That's it? Why do you want to prophesy? Why do you want to be used to God? God only wants to use you because he loves his people and he wants to show them his love. Amen. If you want a gift or anything for any other reason than love, you, you're nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. You do it out of love because God does it out of love. Someone using their gift isn't proof of their perfect love. Wow, he can speak with the tongue of angels. Ooh, they can prophesy to anybody just like that. But do they have love? Why do you prophesy to somebody? To show off your gift? So they can say, wow, I'm scared of you. Because you can see stuff that I know. You got a word now. You can see my life. I am scared. I don't want to be around you. That's right. I see you. If there's no love there, you can forget it. You can forget it. All right. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. You give your body to be burned? I give away every single thing I have. I want y'all to know I give everything away. Everything I have to the poor. You mean you do all of that, and if you don't have love, people do stuff like that and don't have love? Give my body to be burned at the stake means nothing if you have no love. Perfect love isn't proven by a generous act. Oh, we're going to really take all the fluff off of love. Going to take all the fluff off of it. I was on my way home. I was tired and, and everything. But um, I saw somebody on the side of the road. And I, I stopped and I helped him. You know, even though I was tired, I helped him. And while you were pulling over, you already saw yourself telling somebody this. You couldn't wait. To brag on yourself. You didn't do it out of love. <laughs> the Holy Spirit just said Facebook. That's funny. Holy Spirit just said to me, and some do it so they can put it on Facebook. I think it's the first time I ever heard the Holy Spirit say Facebook. <laughs> that is funny to me. Oh, that's funny. So why do you do what you do? Why? Why do you do what you do for people? What if they don't mention you or even thank you? How do you feel? Yeah. What I did for him, he didn't even say thank you. Just took it and ran. Yeah. Amen. 
Did you do it for a thank you? Oh, and this is the big one here. The Holy Spirit just really magnified this one. We do stuff for people because later we want to go back and get the favor. You're not going to do this, but I did so-and-so for you, and you can't do just this for me? We expect a return from the person that we sold a seed into. Somebody we helped, we expect a return. Now, I'm going to do this for you because I don't know if I'm going to ever need you in the future. Well, no, you can keep it. No, if you're not doing it because you love me, you can keep it. I might, I might need you for in the future, so I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Never mind. I, don't, I ain't that desperate. That you're going to hold this over my head every time I see you. I don't know if you come in to say hello or I, I, I need you to make good on what the deal was. Hold this over my head forever. Nah, keep it. I don't care how badly I need it. I don't want it from that type of heart. I need it, and I thought you loved me and would just do this for me. That's it. Just because you love me. Mm, 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 mm. Perfect love is proven when the whole life of a person is full of consistent acts of unselfishness. That's how you prove love. That's how you prove it. My whole life is just full of unselfish acts. Consistent. Well, I guess this isn't one of those messages where you just run around the church. Because you're just so excited to do what the Lord said to I mean, you know, Pastor Wall, Pastor Wall, Dr. Wall, Shane. I mean, that's something. Everything you do, every single thing you do, unselfish. That's really something. Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, charity suffereth long. Love suffers long. Not with yourself. Of course, you got to love yourself. And that's one reason why some people can't love others because they don't love themselves. Suffer long with yourself. I'm not here yet. I'm not doing this. This is suffer long. Hey, hey. It's okay. You'll get there. Whew, charity is kind. Love is kind. I could just put this click in my pocket and do closing prayer and go home now. So many people just don't want to be kind. Just don't want to be kind. Just be kind. If you're not going to be kind, or if you're not kind, you don't really have love. Just that simple. Charity envieth not. Look at what they got. They think they so much because they got that. What if they don't think so much of themselves because they got that? But consider it just a blessing from God. Now you're in trouble with God for talking about them. Yeah. <laughs> and, toward, and, and their heart towards God isn't even like uh, charity vaunted not itself. It's not puffed up. It's not all about me. Not all about me. Unselfish. Doth not behave itself unseemly. People acting out. That ain't love. You ain't had to act like that. You really didn't have to act like that. Amen. Your heart should say, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I really didn't have to. I'm sorry. Ah, now we're back to love. Yeah. Seeketh not her own. Oh, boy. I'm going to do this because I want you to do this for me, like I just said. Right. Seek it not its yeah. own. It's not <laughs> easily provoked. Oh, boy. I need to at least get on one level higher. Yeah. 
to say this. Whoever makes you mad easily, you don't love them. Whoever makes you mad easily, you do not love them. If you get mad at them like that, you don't love them. And that puts you in a judgment position with God. God then judges your life. I'll step back down. But I'm not finished. Amen. So who in your life you don't love? Why don't you love them? Why don't you do everything right toward them? Because that's what love is. Only thing I can hear is the air condition blowing. Y'all are quiet. Well, Pastor Wall, at least let me repent my heart right now. Okay, I mean, you know, I'm seeing myself. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, it's me. I'm just repenting. I'm quiet because I'm talking to God in my heart. But I'm looking at you so you won't know it's really me. that. I... <laughs> Love thinks no evil. No evil. None. Whatsoever. Oh, you see that? See them two together? I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> yeah, now that we're apart, because you know some people can read your lips. But why them two together? Now you know dog and well, love doesn't think evil. Not at all. Oh, I know, I know exactly why she don't want to give me that money. And she knows she got it. And she could loan it to me. No, I know exactly. Love thinks no evil. If you don't have love, you'll depend on people, not God. Because it's, you don't want them to give to you out of love. You just need it. Be very careful of that. Be very careful of that stuff. Wanting, I don't care if it's just time. Or wanting an ear from somebody. Be careful that you don't go to somebody out of need that you know or you're not convinced they really love you. Don't do that. You mess yourself up. You will mess yourself up. Wait until God shows you who to go to. But I'm distraught. I don't know what to do. Well, dry up your dog on tears and go to God and say, okay, Father, who should I go to? I, I, of course I can come to you, but I'm really not hearing you right now. Show me somebody to go to. Somebody who really, really loves me, even to the point to telling me the truth. I don't know. I must have a bad reputation about this because people don't like to come to me. I'd hear it. <laughs> I hear about stuff second and third hand. I guess, yeah, Pastor, because you hard. Come to you crying and this, that, that. Because uh -uh, you wrong. Because it's already known tears don't do a thing to me. They don't. Tears don't do a thing. I just look right at you. You can ask Joshua. Ah! I just look right at him. Which makes it matter. Oh, why won't you pity me? No, just go ahead and cry. Because as soon as you finish, I'm going to still tell you what you did wrong. So y'all don't come to me. It's all right. Fine. <laughs> Rejoiceth not in iniquity. But I mean, hey, hey, hey. Everybody doing a little something wrong. I mean, hey. You don't rejoice in iniquity. I mean, ain't nobody perfect. I mean, hey, everybody got to go out of this life doing something. Child, please. <laughs> Love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. Yeah, I mean, I do wrong every once in a while, but I mean, 
hey, I'm human. And that's what God said is supposed to be perfect, humans. I'm only talking the Bible. This ain't something I made up. I wasn't even born when the Bible was written. I'm only talking about the Bible. It does not rejoice in iniquity. I mean, yeah, I did it. I mean, hey, psh, doesn't everybody? Ain't nobody on this earth perfect, so y'all can't judge me. Only God can judge me. And if you only knew what he was saying. If you only knew what he was saying about you. Only God can judge you. Yeah. Wait until you actually hear what he's saying. But love rejoiceth in truth. You know, when you hear the truth, even if you don't believe it, you're like, child, please. I don't believe that for a second. You don't love. You don't love. You know, I heard such and such about somebody. I think that's so nice. Yeah, you think that's nice. I know them from back. At, you can't rejoice in truth. No love. Love bears all things. All things. You know, so-and-so said so-and-so about you. It's okay. I'll bear that. No problem. You just paid their way into the movies, and you know what they just said about you? Yeah, I'll, I'll bear that. Ain't no problem. It's fine. No problem. Love bears all things. Believeth all things. Whew. This is very important. Very, very, very important. My, my, my little son there um, gets a, 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 a referral and, and brings it home to you. And say, this thing here says such and such. No, mom. I literally did not do that. How are you going to tell me you didn't do when it says right? Love believes everything. Yeah. My wife tells me. I said, is it so, so? She's like, no, I didn't. Okay. I believe. Love has to believe every single thing. Do you know what causes arguments? When you don't believe and you're trying to tell, uh-uh, that is not the truth. When it actually is. Love is supposed to believe everything. I know some of y'all saying, I wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. No, say wait a minute to God. He the one spoke that. Love believes all things. Somebody said, now wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me, now I'm not talking about if somebody said that the, the world is actually square. Okay, please get what I'm saying. We're talking about relationship. This whole message is about relationship. So if somebody tells you something, it doesn't matter what you think. If you don't know, then you're going to have to believe what they say. If you don't know that what they're saying, if it is true or false, you're going to have to believe them. If John Isaac tells you something and the whole time you were thinking something else, you're going to have to believe what he said. And whatever you thought, got to go out the window. Have to go out. It means nothing. Whatever you say, I believe it. And you know what happens? I'm going to tell you what happens. If what they say turns out to be a lie, then God is going to get in the mix of the thing. Now, if they lied, oh, man, the Holy Spirit is really building us up in maturity. If they lied, and come back the very next day about something totally different and say something to you, you have to believe them. Even though they lied yesterday, today, whatever they said, I got to believe them today. Because I believe all things. I believe what you said yesterday turned out to be a lie. But if you say today, I believe you because I'm not going to judge you on your past. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So if I 
think that you're still lying today based on yesterday, then God can't forgive me today from what I did. I can't believe you or disbelieve you based on your past at all because I love you. I have to believe everything you say. Somebody said, so if, if I'm, how in the world can I do, I can't see myself believing, therefore you don't have love. I love you enough that I forgave you, and if you, whatever you say today, I believe you. I believe you. If this one turns out to be a lie, whatever you say to me tomorrow, I'll believe you. If the Holy Spirit tells me differently, then we got something going on. But if I don't know, then I'm imagining. I'm imagining if I say you lying. And what if it's like the boy that cried wolf? He kept lying, 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 said the wolves are here, wolves, wolves, wolves. And then finally, when it really was wolves, they didn't believe him. Just believe. That person is a liar. They didn't repent. Well, I don't know if they repented or not, but how can you call him a liar? Amen. Amen. Ooh, Holy Spirit just said this. How many times did you lie and tell God you wouldn't do it no more? And then you saw I had to get back up, right? <laughs> how many times have we lied and said, I won't do it anymore, but we did it again? Is he to believe us? Is he to believe us this time? <laughs> Hopeth all things. In God, that is. Not, I hope there's a million dollars in my account when I wake up in the morning. No, no, no. <laughs> Hoping based on what God says. We're talking about relationship. We're talking about God. Endureth all things. Not, Lord, deliver me out of this. Endure it. I gave you my whole self. My life belongs to you. If you go through something, Lord, please get me out of this. No, 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 no. Did, did the psalm say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I pray for deliverance? No. I fear no evil. I'm going through the valley of the shower of death. This is what I have to do. I ain't going to fear no evil. Why? Because of love. There's no fear of love. Because you're with me. And I know that if you're with me, I'm well taken care of. Amen. Remember, where there's love, there's no fear. That's why I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Hey, shadows of death. How y'all doing? Oh, there's another shadow of death over there. Hey. Walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Have no fear. I'm with, you see who with me? I'm with God. God's with me. He loves me. He's protecting me from all y'all. Not only the shadow, but the source of the shadow, death itself. I'm protected. You can walk through a hard situation, but because of who is walking with you, and you know how much he loves you. You can go right on through. Now, Lord, take me out of here. He's like, take you out of here. I'm here walking with you. We have to know God's plan is not to deliver us, but to walk through it with us. <laughs> Holy Spirit just said some people call deliverance what God calls destination. I didn't deliver you out of it. It was just the end of it. We walk to the end. This is just the end. That's all. Woo, I thank God he delivered me. Delivered you? No, we went the whole way. This is just where, where we get off. It's just where we get off. That's all. Delivered. Yeah, if you want to look at it like UPS, 
You were there, now you're here. You've been delivered, like a package has been delivered. You are at your destination. So endure all things until you're at your destination. And don't call it a deliverance. Just say, all right, I'm here. I've arrived. (laughs) All right, good. You got it. Perfect love is proven, again, when the whole life of a person is full of consistent acts of unselfishness. Now, I think, comes the question that the Holy Spirit asked me. What did Jesus ever do for himself? What did Jesus, his whole life on earth, what did he ever do for himself? Think about it, as I know you are. What did Jesus ever do besides having to use the bathroom, eating, sleeping? What on earth, his 33 years, what did Jesus ever do for himself? Nothing. Therefore, he was perfect. Unselfish life. Jesus never did anything for himself. Wow. Word of God says, cast your care on him because he cares for you. Cast your care on God. He cares for you. What did Jesus ever do? Oh, when the Holy Spirit asked me that, I was just thinking, thinking, thinking. He never did anything. Everything was for his father. He said, I only do what I see my father do. He did everything to please the father. He worked miracles. I mean, multiplied bread and fish, raised people from the dead. Everything Jesus did was for somebody else. Goes to something the Lord gave me years ago that I've uh, preached and taught about here. I've never seen a tree eat its own fruit. Everything we produce is for somebody else. Why is it that we are so self-centered? It's all about us. Prayers are all about us. Everything's just all about us. Jesus lived a whole life, even from a child. Everything was for somebody else. Perfect love. Perfect love. Can we live our lives and only do Something for somebody else? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. If you want to see God take care of you perfectly, live an unselfish life. Live to do everything for somebody else. Yeah, I don't think we can do that overnight. That's going to take some getting used to, but you better get used to it fast because this is God's way. I I never saw this before, ever, ever. Holy Spirit asked me, what did Jesus ever do for himself? I said, oh my goodness. How many times have we said, I want to be just like Jesus? Oh, oh, to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, how I long to be like him, so meek and lowly, humble and holy, how I long to be like him, to be like Jesus. Oh, y'all don't want to sing with me, do you? I said, no, I, that's, that's something, that, that's, that right there is achieving perfect love. That's what that is. That's achieving perfect love. Ooh, father, 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 father. Oh. Ooh. 
tell me we can't be perfect. I wish somebody would say that to any one of y'all. Some say, hey, man, ain't nobody perfect. You be like, hey, wait a minute. Yes, we can. I ain't talking about Obama's um, slogan. But yes, we can be perfect. Our love can be perfect. Just unselfish. Unselfish. I mean, what if, what if somebody want me to do something that I really can't do? Well, you really can't do it, so it's no question. I mean, God isn't stupid now. He's not to just do everything to everybody. Don't judge us. No. Come on now. Can you take, I, I need a ride to Washington, D.C. I got to work. That's not being selfish. I mean, come on. I have to, I have to work. I can't take you to Washington, D.C. I thought pastor said he's supposed to be thinking about, okay, I think we got it enough to know. We ain't talking about being stupid. If you can and won't, then that's what we're talking about. All right? Two families come knock on my door and say, we don't have a place to live. Can we come in and live with you and Jasmine and Joshie? No, you cannot. Just not going two families. We we ain't got enough now for even another baby. Really, she ain't pregnant. I'm just saying, just ain't got. You just ain't got the space. Y'all get it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, y'all easy get that one. <laughs> but Jesus never did anything for himself, but he was taken care of. How did that happen? Hmm. If anything going to happen, I'm going to have to be the one to do it. You just took God out of your life as being Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Because now you said, ain't nobody going to take care of me but me. Okay. You really have no love. Who's going to take care of me and mine but me? They can't take care of themselves. I have to do everything. Okay, cool. Where'd you get that from? Sure, not from God. Definitely not from God. Again, cast your cares on God. He takes care of us. We're supposed to do his work. We're supposed to help others. We're supposed to do what we're supposed to do for other people. He takes care of us. That's how Jesus lived. Jesus was a carpenter's son. Please show me where he was a carpenter. How did Jesus live? Where did he get money from? What happened? How was he able to eat and buy clothes and toiletries? He was taken care of. That's the way God wants us to live. Well, live for other people. I'll take care of you. If you want to see how well God can take care of you, Live just like this. Live just like this. Do what you do for somebody else. Oh, that's, a, that's quite a bit. But like Sheila says, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. It's big. This is something big. But it'll help you to see how selfish you are when you look at every situation you encounter and how you respond in that situation. I mean, I want this because I want this. What about the other person? We have to... We have to consider. Start with that. That would be good. Consider other people before you make a decision. Start with that and then follow through. Consider. I want this, and it's going to involve somebody else. So because it's going to involve somebody else, let me consider, is this going to be the best for them? So instead of me saying, Chris, this is what I want, I'll say, 
Chris, how do you feel about so and so and so? Not saying y'all don't already do that stuff. How do you feel about so and so? Well, that's cool, but so and so and so. Oh, okay, cool. Why? Why was that? Just ask, answered, settled. Because I believe all things. He said such and such and so. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Cool. Believe all things. No, he don't want to do it. I know why he don't want to do it. He don't want to do it because he'd much rather play this game or that game. No, no, no. Uh-uh. Whatever he said, that's what I believe, point blank. I thought y'all would be excited about love. <laughs> this is love. Love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Woo, love. Ne- I guarantee next time somebody says, I love you, you say, I, wait a minute. <laughs> then before I respond, hold up, hold up. Let me think about this. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I love you. Yeah, 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 I love you. Yeah, I do. This thing is real. This thing is real. So, Father, we just thank you. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for giving us your word today. Thank you for helping us out. Whew. Lord, perfection isn't impossible. It just takes a willingness. It takes a heart that really loves you, want to do all right by you, Lord. So, Father, I just thank you and I praise you that perfection is in our reach. It's attainable and it pleases you, which makes it absolutely what we want to do because it pleases you. So, Father, forgive us. Please forgive us for not pleasing you. Please forgive us for not doing what we know we should have done towards others. And now that we know, we're going to move forward. And we're going to see our lives please you every day, all day. It's all about you. It's not about us. Not our will, but thy will be done. And we thank you, Lord God, that We can be like Jesus. We can live a life of unselfishness. Of course, Lord, you have given us families that we have to take care of, and you have provided even more that we can share with others. Forgive us for every time that we had it to give but refused to give based on your word. So, Lord, we humble ourselves We thank you for giving us your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, some people just don't know. So now, if you don't know the love of God, you personally you don't have that love relationship with God. Maybe you got saved years ago or whenever, and you need to come back to God. Or maybe you've never really given him your entire life. I want to pray with you. I want to pray and just lead you in prayer so that you can have this relationship with God. Or either come back to him if you left. Is there anybody here that says, I need to give my life to God. I want this love like that. Is there anybody here who says, I need to get saved or I need to come back to God? Just raise your hand just up so I can see. Is there anyone here who's not saved or you need to get saved? All right. Okay, cool. Those who are listening and watching, if you fall in either of those two categories, I need to get saved or I need to come back to God, I want, I want you to pray. 
If you can, just bow your head, close your eyes, and say, Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. I confess that I'm a sinner, and I need to be saved. I know Jesus died for me, and you raised him from the dead, and I need to be raised from the dead. Forgive me of all my sins. Make me brand new. Lord Jesus, come into my life and live your life through me so I can please the Father and love him unconditionally as he loves me the same. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. My life belongs to you and you only. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. You know, it would be the easiest thing in the world to say if you know you have not been loving people the way they should be loved, I want you to run down here to this altar and cry. Listen, the Word of God has already done the work in you. And I'm sure almost everybody in here would get up and come to the altar. But you just learned. You just learned. See, I'm, I, hallelujah. I'm a different type of pastor and apostle and preacher. You just learn. Of course, all of us would just want to just come ball our eyes out because I retreat. But we just learn what to do. Now, if next week you're still doing the same exact thing, you need to spend a night on the altar. But now that you have learned, we have learned what God requires. Let's move forward from here. Amen. God has his attention on you because God has a calling on your life. And God wants to use you in his service. Now, I don't know you. Of course, I've seen you before, but I don't know you know you. But God says that he has your heart in a very, very, very peculiar place. Now, success is for you. I'm talking about physical money, business success is for you. All you have to do is focus. That's it. You focus and stay focused, money's going to be drawn to you. I'm seeing um, something in the spirit, it's like, it's like you have this uh, vacuum and then the attachment is like a fan, you know, like that. And I see you just sucking in money. It's just sucking in. You just stand there holding it and it's just coming. So whatever you're going to do, and it, it has something to do with an invention, but it's not like somebody invented something. It's, it's a business type of invention. The way you're going to do it, it's like, you know, that, that, is, that is smart. I've never seen anybody do it like this before. All he wants is your focus. That is all. If you focus on God, God's going to give you something where you'll never have to work for anybody ever. But he has to have you 100%. Because God has seen some things that you've been through even since a little boy. Um, I even see God making your health better as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Pastor, I'm so glad to see the both of you here. So glad to get your text yesterday. It was just awesome to have y'all here. And I want you to, to know that even as it is happening right now, there isn't just one angel behind you, and it's not his hands, but his wings are just like that, just like that behind the both of you just covering you. There are attacks that can't get to you. They can't get to you 
because of the work that must continue. The work that must continue. I'm just saying what he's saying. I don't know what it means, but the work that must continue. And so with him covering you, with this angel, and it's a warrior angel, of course, that's covering you, it's so that you can walk, walk through this season. Just walk out this season into the prosperity that God has for you. And this is spiritual prosperity. Because I already know your hearts of love. I mean, it's just been proven over and over and over. So you're covered, so go. Go. Just go. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Ashley, God said there's some things that you have asked of him, and you've been waiting on his answer, but his answer has actually been a push to just go and do. It's just a push to go and do. So he's saying now sometimes you're not going to hear him, but you're going to be led. So now it's not just hearing, but knowing where to go. So just let him put that knowing in you. Just let him put that knowing in you. Because God said sometimes when you hear him and you're not sure it is him, it causes you to just do nothing. Just do nothing at all. But he says, now it's time for you to know. You're going to have to get out of your comfort zone and just say, okay, I know. I know. And just do it. But what if I'm wrong? I've been wrong before. What if I'm wrong? God said the knower knows. The Holy Spirit is the knower. He knows. You've been depending on your mind. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Put dependence on him. I don't know. I don't know. You're not supposed to know. He knows. Based on his knowledge, go. I'm going to take that for myself. That is awesome. He knows. So this is verified, then go. Because people have missed because you stay. Everybody, please hear this because this is fanning out to everybody. When the Holy Spirit speaks, no, get the knowing, the knowing, the knowing, and then move. Holy Spirit doesn't do it ready, get set, go. Speaks, you obey. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Sweetheart, there is a purpose for your life that God is ready to burst. And as soon as I said that, I saw something. You know, like, like the clowns have these long balloons and they make them into animals and stuff like that. I saw a, a clear balloon and when it burst, a whole bunch of like colors, like paint colors just came out. God said he wants your personality to, to, to really come out. Because you have an awesome personality. Don't close up. Don't shut down. Just express yourself. Because through that, you're going to see ministry just come alive through you. Your purpose will literally be realized as you just simply be yourself. Just be who you are. Because God made you. You have love. You, wow, even though you have been through some, some heartaches, you still have love. Some people, they go through stuff, and they can't find themselves to trust anybody else ever. It's just done. But God sees you, and he knows you, and he loves you. And he, want, he said, I want to father you. He wants to father you. And be there with you, even as what we call the good. He just wants to be there. 
And what he mean by wants to be there, that you would just acknowledge, Father, even when you're just riding along, just talk to him. Just talk to him. You're going to have, this is the best way I can describe it, little chats with God back and forth, just chatting back and forth. And it's going to be so precious, so precious as the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And you're another one, that knower is going to cause boldness to come out. I mean boldness, because what you get in prayer, you will say out there. It just happened to Ryan. And that's exactly what's going to happen for you. So just start, just start loving him. Just, just talk to him. Just talk to him. Just talk. Just talk. Things come to your mind, talk to him about it. Don't let it stay on your mind. Don't, don't keep pondering, 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 wondering, wondering. He said, just talk it out to me, and let's talk about it. All right? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My brother, you have a rich knowledge of the word. And not only do you have a rich knowledge of the word, but you have a love for God's word. And this is what God is going to do. God, I, I, I see a key right here, not in your heart, but one of those old skeleton keys. And, and the round part is at the bottom, but the um, actual uh, mechanism part that opens the door is up top. And it's like, not it's like, you literally wear the key for people's lives. And I see you, hallelujah, I see you coming to somebody's life who needs it, and you use the key to unlock what they need. You put it back on until you find somebody else that's locked up in something. You take the key, unlock it, put it back on. You wear a key of, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, of wisdom and understanding for people's lives. And as you encounter people who come to your life, who come up to you. Now, if people come to you with like problems and situations and stuff, don't be ashamed or afraid to give your opinion. And don't consider your opinion nothing like, well, I mean, this is just my opinion. No, you have the key for a lot of people's lives. You've seen some things. You've experienced some things. And some things, you know, people could have done better. Those are keys that you have. And, and, and this is your mentality. Well, I mean, they should have known that. They should have known that. But you see, this is the thing, sir. You had that key. They didn't have it. It's so easy for you. And that's why you were laughing like, they should have known that. But they didn't. They didn't. You have a key that comes easy to you. You see a situation, a problem and stuff, and yeah, please. Give people the key. You have a key for people's lives that will literally change the course of their destiny because right now they're destined for something that's not too wonderful at all. You really don't know who you are. You really, really, really don't know who you are. You have and it's one key. It's not a different key. You put it right back on. It's, you have a, a way of seeing life that God has just blessed you with that is just your way of seeing. So you think, but God has gifted you with this. Give the key to somebody. Let them unlock it. And they get it back because somebody else is going to need it. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Favor, 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 favor. Favor. God is speaking favor right now. Favor, 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 favor. I speak favor over your lives, over your lives, over your lives. Those who are here, those who are listening and watching, I speak favor over your lives. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ. And then, hoo, hoo, hoo. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, the word of God says that he'll compass us about with favor as with a shield. And the reason why, I'm just getting this revelation, the reason why he said favor is going to be over your lives 
is because the enemy is shooting some things down. And as that shield is over your life, favor, things are going to go good. And I don't mean like good, great, wonderful. No, no, no. Good, because God is good. It's just all good. All good gifts come from God. So the hallelujah, the shield of favor is going to keep all the negative stuff off of you. Let me explain. That doesn't mean you're not going to go through some situations. What? But you won't go through the situations that will destroy what God wants to do with your life. That's that favor. So if you go through something bad, it's not going to be detrimental to your life. It's just something you're going through because whatever was supposed to get to you to destroy what God has purpose for your life, that favor is going to keep those fiery darts from getting to you. That you will see it just as sure as my name is what it is. God is going to withhold nothing from you. Nothing. Nothing. Watch what I'm telling you. God will withhold nothing, nothing, nothing. From this point forward, as we have already in our hearts, I didn't uh, lead you in no prayer to say, well, Father, Lord, I don't know. We've already heard the word. Now it's time to do it. Amen. We heard the instruction. Now it's time to do it. It is not, I don't want anybody in here to, to, to sulk into, man, I really haven't been loving. I really, no, we got the instruction. Just go do it. There's no sulking. Now I know. Now I'm going to do it God's way. And then I want you to let, let's, let's see how unselfish we can literally be. Amen. Let's see how unselfish we can literally be. And for some of us, it, it, it's not our whole lives are just unselfish, but we'll come up and we'll say, you know, I can do better. Immediately, my mind says, mm, I don't want to do this because they're not really in my clique. You know, I don't really hang out with them like that. Now, if so-and-so would have asked me for $20, I would have gave it to them like no problem. God's like, check your heart. Check your heart right now with this decision. Check your heart. Why won't you give it to them? Because you don't feel like this person here, you know, we always back and forth giving each other. But this one here, I'm not, mm. And please do this. All, if you ever have a question, ask God. Like, I don't want to be selfish, but I don't know because I don't want to enable them to, to, well, who are you to judge? Ask the Father. He knows. Holy Spirit, do you want me to give this? If so, I'll give it to him. Not a problem. I don't want anything back from them. Not at all. I'm giving this. The Bible says, I don't care if it's eating or drinking or whatever you do, do everything you do is unto God. That's what the Bible says. Everything unto God. Amen? Amen. All right.